Well, I'm pleased to say Professor Avigdor Schertz is one of the two scientists who developed this treatment at the Weizmann Institute of Science. He's there in our studios in New York. Wow, this is truly incredible. How excited are you? Well, I must say that I'm very excited. I mean, it's uh, the uh, jewel in the crown of uh, many, many years of working, uh, starting with the concept that uh, we developed together with my collaborator, Professor Yoram Salomon from the Weizmann Institute based on uh, experience that I had in photosynthesis, fairly remote field of cancer therapy, where we learned to know that um, a pigment, a molecule called uh, bacterial chlorophyll, uh, or chlorophyll, that is in bacteria, uh, can do harm uh, when you illuminate it out of the uh, plant milieu or the bacteria milieu. Uh, I'll, come back, you do it to, I'll come back to how you did it in a moment, but in terms of the results, uh, I mean, 49% uh, complete remission, only 6% needed to have uh, their prostate removed. I mean, how surprised were you when that was the sort of data you were getting back? Well, um, it, it is the uh, continuation of, uh, you know, phase two and phase one clinical trial that already show this indication of very high percentage of cure. As a fa in fact, the cure rate is, is actually higher, but some of the patients did not want to undergo biopsy to prove or to test whether they are uh, tumor free because they felt okay. So actually the numbers are higher. Uh, uh, there was indication for that, but I was surprised by really having minimal or as uh, Dr. Emberton defined it, um, practically no side effects and having the patient so early uh, get home and to normal activity. This is really uh, a big joy, yeah. I would say. Real, yeah. real game-changing stuff. I mean, why did you think that something from the deep seabed would actually help? I mean, what took you to even consider that? Well, <clears throat> I, uh, I have my education in physics and chemistry and, and I dealt with photosynthesis and uh, light reactions photosynthesis for quite some time. And also in gen generally in science, in science and nature, you know, nature teach us um, many things that have been perfected through a million and billion years of evolution. And one of them is get rid of uh, malfunctioning organs. And when you look at the cancer, at the tumor, it is a malfunction organ that you want really to get rid of it as a whole. And so it occurred to us that the means used by nature can be mimicked by this molecule uh, if we will able to get it into the uh, patient uh, blood vessels, the circulation, without actually getting it into the cells. It just circulates in the blood and just a small correction to what you said in the beginning, it's not injected to the prostate, it's injected IV uh, as many other drugs. Uh, and it, it circulates in the body for quite short time. And and uh, you only illuminate it in the area of the tumor, yeah, with, in the, the prostate. With the lasers. Uh, just briefly on this with point, why, why does it attack just the cancer and not the healthy tissue? Well, uh, the uh, cancer is a very, as I've said, a malfunction organ with a very particular type of blood vessel that are fairly fragile. Uh, there is a lot of um, uh, different uh, uh, materials that go around within the circulation that makes this particular method very effective on the circulation of the cancer and on the um, cells that comprise the tumor and therefore it has this kind of uh, selectivity and there are some Let other details sure. in, the, in, the, in the structure I, I haven't of got, the prostate I, that helps it. I haven't got a, a huge amount of time left, but some pretty important questions to ask you. So let's just rattle through a, a couple yeah. of them. I mean, how quickly do you think it can be wheeled out to become the standard treatment? And what are the implications for other cancers, a similar type of technology, but with other cancers? The first question, I think um, it's now at the end of the discussion with the uh, EMA, the European uh, Medicinal uh, Association. Therefore, I hope that within a short time it will be uh, approved not only in uh, Central America, in Israel, but all over the world, um, a year or less than a year. Uh, and the, uh, right now I'm sitting in New York uh, working at Memorial Sloan Kettering with uh, Jonathan Coleman, Peter Scardino, David Kelson, other people on several uh, other indications, including uh, advances of a GL cancer, triple negative breast cancer, cancers of the urinary tract, 
where we also have strong collaboration with uh, Freddie Hamdi uh, and Richard Bryan from um, Oxford as well as with Mark Emberton. So, so, so we so hope it, that it, within it, the coming years... Sure, so it yeah. could spread across any number of other cancers as well. Very briefly, right. the depths of the ocean, are there more secrets and medical advances you think somehow it still has to give? Absolutely, yeah. I think that not only in the depths of the ocean, but in the depths of nature. As I've said, nature developed many, many processes to solve problems that we encounter. We just have to uh, combine it, you know, to, to, to get it uh, in the place and to learn from it and then to try to do our own modifications, uh, chemistry, high tech, whatever, in order to get it done when we really want it to be done in a very precise manner. And that's what was done by the uh, team led by Mark Emberton yep. uh, from the UK, uh, Azuzi from France and other people. And lastly, I must make that without the very intimate collaboration of the uh, biotech firma, Steba Biotech, well, well, uh, that was as right always from with, the beginning. As always with advances like this, there are so many people who've had small contributions, but yours has been a major contribution and it's been fascinating talking to you. Thank you so much for joining us here on today's programme. Thank you.